Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and I want to go over the topic of using for flight and electronic flight bags for cross country flight planning. A lot of times for private pilots, they use paper nav logs like a Jeppesen nav log and fill it out, and they learn about the true course that they're plotting on the uh, sectional. They then know how to uh, figure out the wind correction angle, the magnetic variation, and a compass deviation to ultimately get to a uh, magnetic heading to fly the aircraft. When you go to electronic flight bags such as ForeFlight, it spits out for you an AvLog report that could be difficult to communicate and explain to a DP on a check ride. So this video is going to go over understanding the columns in an AvLog report from ForeFlight uh, so that hopefully you can talk intelligently uh, to the DP on your check ride and ultimately lead to success on that check ride. Before we get into it though, consider the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video. All right, we're gonna talk about interpreting a ForeFlight's Navlog report. All right, so here in ForeFlight, I've got a flight plan from Laconia to Auburn Lewiston, Maine, direct course. And what we need to do is figure out the true course heading. If we were filling out a typical paper Navlog, we need to know the true course heading. And we need to factor in what the winds are along this route of flight and we need to uh, determine the magnetic variation as well. And once we have all that information and plot it uh, in a paper nav log, we can determine which direction to fly the plane from a magnetic heading. And so this we're gonna cover um, in the next couple of slides, but particularly as it relates to floor, floor flight. So the typical Jeppesen paper nav log looks like something like this. Uh, you can download it, PDF, Excel file, and you can do um, paper uh, flight planning, uh, cross-country flight planning. Um, when filling out the paper cross-country nav log to ultimately determine the magnetic course heading to fly, we first need to determine the true course from the sectional chart using a plotter, and then we can factor in terms such as the wind correction angle, the magnetic variation, and the compass deviation. Though compass deviation card is no longer required in an aircraft uh, per FAR 23.1327 that I Leaf came out, updated in 2017. Now, the typical four-flight nav log report looks a little bit different, as you can see here below. And if we decide to use an electronic flight bag, um, such as four-flight, for our cross-country flight planning, we better be prepared uh, to be able to explain to the designated pilot examiner all of the columns in the EFB nav log and how they relate to wind correction angle, magnetic variation, true versus magnetic heading, and true versus magnetic course. So we're going to decipher here on this page um, four flights nav logs so you have a better understanding of what's going on. So at the top here we have in the header we have it's Laconia to Auburn Lewiston on this particular day with a altitude flying at 5,500. It's 57 nautical miles. Looks like we're going to have a um, strong tailwind going up there. Um, estimated time of departure is 1500 Zulu. Um, <clears throat> Estimated time arrival, 1529, or about 29-minute flight. Um, takeoff weight, 1911. Uh, we have 48 gallons of fuel on board. We have a gallon and a half dedicated for taxi and run-up, and flight fuel is about 6.7 gallons. And so we'll have about 41.3 gallons left over uh, when we land. Now, if we look here in the meat of this uh, situation, it's down here. So we've got our waypoints, Laconia, top of climb, top of descent, and Auburn Lewiston. We're going to fly a direct airway to there. And then we need to fly a magnetic heading of 76 to start out with, and then 074, then 078 uh, on our descent. And the magnetic heading is the true course plus the magnetic variation, variation which is an isogonic line of 15 degrees west, plus the wind correction angle. It's all kind of calculated here in this one column. This column magnetic course is a function of the true course plus just the magnetic variation. It doesn't factor in the wind correction angle. But between the two of them, get my pointer on here, but between the two sets of data, we could determine what the wind correction angle is uh, by doing some subtraction between the two uh, sets of numbers. This is our altitude column. Uh, here we have our headwind tailwind component. So we got a tailwind of 19 knots going to 34 knots down to 15 knots as we're coming, um, descending in altitude. Our direction of wind and speed, um, its direction and then the, the velocity. And then we have the isocolumn. This is a temp delta above or below the 
standard international um, um, atmosphere for the particular altitude we're flying. If you remember, an international standard atmosphere at sea level is 15 degrees Celsius and 29.92 inches of mercury. Um, so if we're flying at 5,500 feet um, and we, the atmosphere at sea level was that 15 degrees Celsius, we should see a temperature of about 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, every 1,000 feet we go up in altitude, we lose 2 degrees C. So we should be somewhere around 4 degrees Celsius at 5,500, but we see plus 3. So we're actually plus 3 above that. So instead of 4, we're actually about 7 degrees for Celsius for our, our temperature um, at that altitude. So that's what that column's about. Of course, we have our speeds and knots, the true airspeed, which you get right out of the POS, and then the ground speed, um, which is because we have such a strong tailwind, you can see why our ground speed is so much higher than our true airspeed. We have the distance of nautical miles for each leg of the trip, and then the remaining length for each leg, the fuel, the fuel um, required, used. Um, this is 1.5 is for the taxing, and then to get to top climb, 4.0, and then another uh, 4.8, by the time we get to top descent, and then overall we're burning 6.7 gallons with a remainder in the tank of 41.3. And this is the amount of uh, the legs and how much time is going to take between legs and the time remaining in flight. Again, this flight is 29 minutes in length, and there we go, 15 minutes left, 10 minutes left, and then we're arrived at Kalu. An estimated time and route, again, 29 minutes. So again, true course is... Um, what we would find on a plotter, if we were plotting this out in the sectional, the magnetic variation, MB, is the isogonic lines, and the wind correction angle is something that we would calculate using like an E6B. So those are the key things you need to know about when interpreting a nav log from foreflight. It's important you just don't walk in there and say, here's my heading that I gotta fly, and don't know anything else, anything else about what the wind correction angle is, or what the magnetic variation is. Um, what the tailwind components are or headwind components are, um, the temperatures uh, at the altitude you're flying, all that needs to be understood and you need to be able to communicate it to the DPE for your check ride. Anyways, hopefully you found this information useful and helpful. If you did, consider it in the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified of my next video.